So for this Nerd Corner, let's talk about Breath of Fire 3. Breath of Fire 3 was an earlier PS1 game that, while not being the most challenging of RPGs, or perhaps the most graphically pretty, it did offer a comprehensively powerful story and a unique setting. And the story was dark, especially for the time, where it's in a post-apocalyptic world, it's in a setting where you see a lot of the darker impulses of humanity at work and reigning supreme, actually. A lot of what you deal with is the criminal elements, especially earlier in the game, where you're trying to do the right thing to help these people and make something of yourself, but the world itself is bad to a point, and it doesn't really let you do good things without power. Which brings us into the second theme, and perhaps the most important theme of the whole story, which is that power is necessary to achieve your ends, but at the same time, too much power will automatically, inevitably, invite the fear of those with less power. In fact, the main conflict, without spoiling anything, it revolves around the idea of power and how much power is too much power to trust with anyone. Let's say you had one of the most noble people around, super noble, wonderful, good person, but they also had the power to, with a single gesture of their hand, wipe out an entire city. Well, would you be afraid of them? Probably. Even if they were super noble, like I said, great and wonderful and good, the fact that they could, with the blink of an eye, basically, destroy you and everything that you know, makes them worthy of being feared. And so, when you play a character with this kind of power and the world turns on you and is afraid of you because of what you could do, regardless of whether you will or not, it invites that question about, one, is there such a thing as too much power? And two, do we have the right as people with less power to judge those with more simply because we're afraid of them? And it gets into some other very sort of heady topics simply by making you experience them first person. You are this character, you are doing these things, and these are all things affecting you and how you get through this world. So it's not so much tackled in this grandiloquent way where they wax poetically about it. You simply are there in it and its effects and what it did to the world and you and you are left to sort of make your own judgments about the actions of everyone around you and your character. Were they right to attack you because you have this power, even though you actually didn't present a threat to them? Can you understand why they did this? It, it, without throwing it in your face, it actually asks a lot of pretty important questions about human society and such, if you read between the lines and take a moment to think about why characters are, were doing the things that they were doing. They tackle mortality. They tackle the idea of sacrifice. They tackle all sorts of various deep topics. And they all do it that same sort of way by simply inserting you into them happening. And you're left to make judgments based on what these people did and what came from it. What, what happened because they took this action. At one point, someone's trying to bring someone back from the dead which they were a loved person and great and all this stuff. So there's a lot of good undertones to why they were doing this, but it then asks that question again. How much power is too much power? And once you can bring back something like the dead, even if it were to work right, would that be a power that people should have? And to bring another point into it, it sort of ties into the power thing, but it also plays into the mechanics. Your character is minor spoilers, I guess, a dragon person. You can transform from a human into a dragon during battles, and it's a pretty cool system. In fact, you have the ability, especially as the game goes on, to change your dragon form and switch into other things, and by the end, you have a whole variety of choices to combine various elements together to make your own dragon forms and discover the hidden ones kind of nestled in the combinations. And this is sort of a good way, I think, of reflecting the power that your character is supposed to represent. That he has the ability to basically become anything he needs to be in order to be victorious. Which, as you can 
if you think about that in real world applications, okay, you can become whatever is needed to overcome any particular situation, well, that's godlike power. And so by playing it and seeing how effective it is, oh, these enemies are weak to this, well, let me just jimmy up this form real quick and switch into something that can beat them and then change into this, and you're like, wait, I'm really powerful. I can do a lot of stuff. Wait, I get why they're, these people are trying to get rid of me or they're afraid of me. Hmm. And so if we're to look at the game from, like, what can we learn from it? What is it trying to tell us, right? It's an art form. It's an entertainment piece. But it's also got a message, as most games inevitably do. This one is trying to tell us, I think, power, regardless of who wields it, is dangerous, even if not for the person that wields it, but for the people around them and how they react to it. And that what it is to be human is not about what really we are, but what we do with what we have, that that makes the human condition, that whatever we're given, whatever cards we're dealt, what makes our life what it is, is how we choose to deal with those cards and what we make of what we have. You start with a character that's basically part of a bandit group who has nothing. And in the end, you're an incredibly powerful person fighting for the fate of the entire planet with a whole slew of, you know, a whole slew of allies at your side and all of that. Yet, the whole time, you never do escape that idea, that knowledge that you started with nothing and that the world, most of it, is still in that place. And so... I think one of the final points, and a good message to close on, is that it speaks of the good that unlimited and ultimate power could potentially do. That somebody governed by impeccable morals and a sense of right and wrong could use great power not to be corrupted by it, not to create an, you know, a cycle of violence or death based on them enforcing their will over the world, but could use power to simply free people to make their own choices. And I think if we applied that lesson to the world right now, we could say it would be nice to have somebody who was impeccably moral and incorruptible take the reins of power and use it to reorganize things. Just something to think about.